Hey everybody, this is Ian O'Byrne again. I'm taking a look at an app that I use pretty regularly, and by that I mean I use it a couple times a day, and that's Google Keep. Uh, previously, I would use Evernote, and I would use Evernote to keep track of all of my uh, things as I read online, or notes, or little documents as I work on it. Uh, I have since moved away from Evernote. I will put together a video to share how I used Evernote because I think that's important to see what made Evernote work for me. And now that'll help, uh, and that should help explain how I use Google Keep or other systems that I'm trying to use. Um, but once again, this video is going to focus on Google Keep. I'll have a couple of videos showing how I use Google Keep and why it works for me, or at least right now it works for me. Um, I'm constantly testing it and trying to make it uh, do the best that it can be and, and mostly fit my system. So I think the important thing with all of this is that, you know, I, I have a system or I had a system and I'm trying to find ways to recreate that system. Um, so Google Keep is one tool that might work in my system. So you have to think about what is your system and what tools might work for you. So I have a couple different videos on Google Keep. The first is just setting it up. And I think that you need to just get it up and running and set it up and see how it operates. And then once you see how it operates, then you can figure out what other additions you need to make. I'm going to have a video on how I use Google Keep on my mobile and on tablet because that's an important piece of my system. Um, and I will also have a video on how I use Google Keep in my writing because I think there's some of you out there that will um, find some insight into this possible tool. So once again, Google Keep is a free product. It's from Google and it's part of all the Google apps. It's one of those things that's built in there that not many people know about, not many people use, but you should. Um, you can see that there is, you know, an iTunes app. There's an Android app somewhere down here. Um, there's an iTunes app, uh, so you can put it on your iPad and your iPhone. You put it on your Android devices. You can also use uh, it on Chrome and, and in your browser, and, and I use, mostly I use it on mobile, but then I get into it and I access it on the browser, and you'll see how I do that. Uh, so if I'm signed into Google Keep, uh, into my Google account right now, you can see I'm signed in to my major account, and I have, basically it's pretty sparse. So I have Google Keep up here, I can see, I can search for uh, different pieces that I have. So let's say I have uh, Jelly. I think I have a jelly recipe saved in here. There we go. So I had a shopping list that I put together um, at, at some point. I don't even know when this was. So this was uh, back in March. But I can go back and I can search through my notes and see. Okay, let's see. I was doing some recent writing about portfolios. Or if I was doing WordPress posts, I can see what have I written about WordPress um, or save notes about WordPress. So one of the nice things is that Google Keep will allow you to search through all of your notes. Um, and that's important for me. I want to be able to quickly get in and, and process what happens. So if I click on notes, I can see what notes I have saved in here. Um, you know, this is my main box. So the, the, way, the way that I set up Google Keep is the same way that I set up Evernote in the past is I have basically an inbox and an archive. For me, if I have multiple layers and multiple boxes and, and labels and stuff like that, things don't work. I need something that's simple. I want to take a note. I want to use the note. And then when I'm done with it, I don't want to see it again. Unless I want to go back and search for it at a later date. So frequently, frequently what will happen is I'll take a note. I'll save it. And then when I'm done with it, I'll archive it. And then three weeks later, a year later, I say, I really wish that I found. And I know that I can go back in and search for that. That's one of the things I loved about uh, Evernote. My system previously was save a note, use it when you're done, archive it. But then there's some, uh, you know, I, I relieve some stress because I know that I don't have to worry about that note ever again because I know where the note is and I know I can search for it and get it pretty quickly. So I showed you the search bar. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to take a note. So if I start up a note, I can give it a title. Um, this give this no a uh, no a title so I can give this thing a title and I can write anything that I want in here what I can also do is I can add images to this thing I can save hyperlinks so the the nice part about this is 
I view my use of Google Keep as a, a, an equivalent of post-it notes. So for those of you that don't know, post-it notes are those little ubiquitous paper squares with the adhesive on the top, and you can jot down a note and save it. The nice thing about that is I can just jot down a note and pretty much throw it away when I'm done. So I don't really put any extra thought into, well, is this a very valuable note for my future? I basically take a note, write it down, throw it out when I'm done. I view my use of Google Keep the same way that I do with post-it notes. The issue is with post-it notes, I write down a note and then I sit at my desk and I try to figure out, okay, where am I going to put this? I save a bunch of post-it notes on my laptop screen or on a whiteboard or on my desk or I have notes jotted down in my uh, notebook or my, my day planner and all of these different notes. Then you're trying to figure out where is that post-it note. The nice thing about Google Keep is that these notes follow you. They're digital notes and they are uh, ubiquitous. They're pretty much on any device or any place that you sign in. So these are mobile notes, they are post-it notes, they follow you, but they're also uh, multimodal information. That means they can they contain text, images, links, hyperlinks, pretty much anything you want. So I could write about minions. Okay, I can if I want to, I can. Uh, you know, looking across the bottom, I can remind myself. So the remind me feature I use pretty regularly. I use it when I want to make sure that I address something. So if my wife says, hey, make sure that you uh, turn on the dishwasher before you leave the house, I want to make sure that I definitely get that done so I can set a note for myself. I can set a note to remind me you know, as I get to work, I can remind myself as I leave home or a specific time. So the reminder I'll use if there's something that I need to make sure that I definitely do because I know it'll pop up on my phone and it'll be a trigger to remember to remember to do it. You can collaborate on notes. I don't really do that. Um, this is pretty much like I said, I view this as my use of post-it notes. So these are throwaways. There are opportunities to change the color of the notes. So there are people out there that will set up their uh, Google Keep with uh, labels. They'll have a home, a work label. They'll have all of these different categories. I don't do that. I keep it simple. Sometimes I'll throw in colors just to mix it up. If I'm working on a project and I want to visually cluster things together, I'll use colors. For the most part, I don't do that. Once again, my process is simple. I have an inbox. This is the inbox and I have an archive. The archive is pretty much where everything goes after I'm done with it. So the inbox I care about, the archive I really don't care about. I throw notes in there when they're done. And I don't really trash anything because I wanna make sure I get to it at a different date. So let's get back into this. I can add images. So I can go to my desktop and I can pull in an image. So I can see that it's uploading an image that I have. I can click add. So now I have a note with an image in the note. The nice thing is if this were a, a picture of a website or a screenshot, I might not want to save this uh, any place particular, but I want to make sure I get to this image at a later date. The other thing that's nice is that you can, uh, they have optical character recognition, so they have OCR built into this. So if you take a screenshot of like a whiteboard in your classroom, if you take a picture of something, it, um, you know, that you see out in the street that you want to remember when you get back to your website and your blogging, this is a great way to save photos. And once again, when we get to the, the web, to the mobile side or the tablet side, we can see how the mobile device really helps out. So I can add images to this. I can also get rid of that image. So I can go back into my little note about minions here. Um, and what's also fun is that I can add in, if I'm looking at images, I can also add in uh, animated GIFs or GIFs, depending on what side of the street you grew up on. So if I go back in here, I know that I have, where is it? I know I saved a GIF in here to pull up. So this is a GIF that I downloaded to my desktop, I uploaded it to the note, and now this thing is living in my note. So at a later date, I can get back to it. Once again, if I'm blogging and I find a, a GIF or a GIF online that I want to access, I can save it to a note. I know that I can get to it. I know I can pull it back up. And if I pull this thing back open, I can download this and save it. Uh, but there's a lot of opportunities to work with images and video and content like that. 
So uh, moving along, I'm going to skip over the archive button. If I go to more, I can delete this note. Delete is going to move it to the trash. If it's in the trash, I still have access to it. I can add labels. So if I'm going to look at labels for a second, I'm going to go over here to my settings. Nope, that's not what I'm going to do. I'm going to go into create new label and some people will have, like I said, a work label, a home label, you know, a read label, stuff like that. Um, you know, this is what I want to blog about. So they'll have different labels and then what they do is they go into their note and they can add a color and say, okay, all of the purple notes are for work and all of the red notes are for home um, but they can also add labels so they can add a label and say okay this is a post I want to think about this when I get home today so you can see in your notes you have a little visual reminder that this is for home once again I don't do that I want these to be simple I want it basic I want these to be for the most part throwaway so if I get back into my note I add text um, I can add images what I can also do is if I pull up a website, so let's say I pull up a website and I'm looking at Minions. Sorry, we just watched Despicable Me 3, and now it's the only thing that we watch in my house. So if I want to, I can paste in a hyperlink to this. And what it'll do is it'll load the, the website for me. I can remove it. I can copy the URL. Um, there's also uh, a lot of other functionality built into the links. Um, supposedly, if I add something with the word movie in brackets, it'll automatically search and connect to like Rotten Tomatoes and, and uh, the Internet Movie Database. I don't go to that extent. I do save links, hyperlinks in my notes, um, and I'll talk about that later as why it's important for my writing. But for the most part, I keep it simple. So I have text, I have hyperlinks, I have images. Um, if I want to keep save a link to a YouTube video, um, I can save links in there. So if I pull this up, it's basically going to treat it the same way that it treats the other links. So I can have the YouTube link, it's going to pull it in, and now I can have links that I can copy, I can delete, I can share out. So this is basically a multimodal post-it note for me. And the nice thing is that I can access it here in my browser, I can access it on my mobile devices, I can access it on my tablet, um, and I can go into a classroom and use it whenever I need to. Um, while we're here, I can add a drawing. So I have a real easy way to add in a drawing and I can basically share some visual information, um, you know, I can jot something down on a tablet or if I'm uh, on my mobile device, it's a little bit easier. In the past, I've had a Note 3 and I could take out the stylus and write down something quick like a phone number and save it into Google Keep for a later date. Um, so this opportunity is there to save your stuff as a drawing. So I can see now my Frankenstein note has a drawing and has hyperlinks and it did have images and gifs there um, so if I'm also looking at this I can make a copy of this thing if I needed to um, there's while we're here there's the undo redo piece but one of the nice things that adds some functionality and power to this are two different things one is as I'm taking a note um, you know I can start off a brand new note and I can say shopping list And what I can do is I can add checkboxes. So I can say apples, jelly, milk. What's nice is that I can, if I wanted to, I could share this with my wife and have a family shopping list of materials. I can do this as I create a shopping list on my mobile device or on the computer when I head out. I've also used this um, recently as I've put together, I don't have it on this one, I archived it. But I just submitted materials for a tenure review here, and there was a, a lot of different files that I needed, and I wanted to make sure I saved it and saved the naming mechanism of all of these. Um, and so a, a checklist helps me, so I can say, yeah, I definitely took care of those different pieces, and it'll keep track of it. And once again, it's keeping track of this across the whole 
um, across all of those places where you're saved into Google Keep. So once again, when I use Google Keep for the most part, what I want to do is I want to have an inbox and that's stuff that's important to me and I want to have an archive and that's stuff that I don't care about anymore and I don't have to think about it. I know I can access it by searching for it, but I don't really want to see it in my inbox because I don't want to think about it. So what I do is I archive stuff. Okay, so the archive basically gets it out of this main view and it moves it to a, a backup place. So I can hit archive and these things are gone. This is a note um, that I took yesterday before I went into class. So this was basically my overview of things I wanted to talk about in class. And what's nice is instead of having it jotted down on a piece of paper, I have this on in keep and then I can pull up my phone and have my phone next to me or my tablet or even my browser as like a little post-it note. And now this is done. This note really doesn't matter to me so I can archive it and get rid of it. Um, I have a, a writing piece that I want to work on with a, a colleague, something I read yesterday I want to make sure that I see today. Um, I have been thinking about adding some, uh, printing out some photos of cities that we've lived in and put them into an art project here at the house. Um, I've already done that, so I'm just going to archive it and get rid of it. I've had some research pieces. Um, but the other thing that I want to take a look at, other than the inbox and the archive and the check boxes, is how nicely this fits into uh, Google Docs. So as an example, I have this post here. So this is just a note. So as I'm walking along, I'm thinking about, hey, there's an idea that I have for a possible blog post. Um, it's something I saw or something I read, and I want to make sure that I don't forget this. So I can save this as a note if I want to. I can remind myself. I can obviously go in and you know continue to add notes. Um, you know what I can also do is as I find things, I can add in URLs. I can add in images. I can basically start off my note taking process and my idea generation process here in a Google Keep note. What's also nice is if I when I get to the point where this becomes less a note and becomes more of like an initial draft, I can copy this thing over to Google Docs. So my writing process, as I've talked about in the past, primarily begins and, and I'm trying to make it end in Google Docs. So the nice thing is that this note now becomes the first draft of my uh, blog post or journal publication or whatever. So the nice thing is I can use this as a way to sort of ping myself and save ideas and then come back to it at a later date when I want to. Um, there's only other co uh, a couple other things here in Google Keep that I want to take a look at. Um, one of which is if you are, uh, one of the things I used Evernote a lot for is I would save uh, websites in it. So if I see something online, and this is not how I do my bookmarking right now, I have another tool that I use, um, but it's something to, to keep in mind. So it does a relatively good job of bookmarking. So if I want to save this um, to read at a later date or say I want to save it to save in a blog post or I want to save it for my newsletter, what I can do is, let me pull this down a little bit. So there's an extension that I use. So I can click the extension and it will basically, I can take a note, uh, use in my newsletter. Hold on. Come on doesn't want to work for me. So what I can do is I can save it, I can add a title, um, then I can open that thing up and keep to see what this would look like. So here is my note that I just took, there's the link, um, you know, you could just copy paste the link, but now this is a note that I can use. All right, I was making sure that it would let me type. Um, so there's a, a now you can have a note of that web page. So there's a way to bookmark the site if you're interested in using it for bookmarking. Once again, I don't use it for bookmarking. I try to keep it as simple as possible. Um, you know, and then when I'm done with this thing, I can archive and get rid of it at a later date. If I want to, I can go into trash and I can see the notes that I have left in there. Um, I don't know why there's nothing in there, but we'll come back to it. Um, so I try to keep it as simple as possible, my use of keep, um, just so I don't confuse myself. Um, there's one last thing I want to take a look at while we're here in the browser because it'll be important when we look at this 
on the mobile devices, on the tablets and stuff like that. And aside from using it as post-it notes and being able to add text and images and hyperlinks and checklists and bookmarks, aside from images having OCR or optical character recognition and the ability to search text in images, aside from being able to draw or sketch out pieces, um, you know, aside from all of those things and, uh, and aside from using it in Google Docs, one of the other things that I love Google Keep for is, and this is more on the um, tablet, I mean the mobile side, but one of the nice things is that it has built into it the opportunity to save audio recordings. This is a game changer for me. So what will happen is, and there's a lot of ideas here, things that I want to work on. So this is just a lot of idea generation happening here. One of the things that will also happen is, as I am um, reading, as I'm listening to audiobooks, as I am um, you know, listening to podcasts on the way into school. Um, if I'm working on something and my, uh, you know, my son says something or my wife says something and I want to be able to remember it for later, what I'll do is I'll pull out my phone and I'll do an audio recording of it. Okay. So I'll do an audio recording just to save it for later. Uh, because most times I can't, I don't have the time to like pull out my phone and pull over my car and text it to myself or type out the piece. I want to basically stop the audiobook or stop the podcast and record it. And I'll show you on the device what it looks like, but the nice thing is that it automatically pulls it over to here. So I can see that I was listening to something, some podcast, and this came up and it made me have an idea that I didn't want to lose back in January. So, I mean, basically, that's just an audio recording of me talking. So, it's a voice note that it's saving in all of this. So, I can come into this and say, okay, now I know what I want to say. It automatically typed out this text for me. It may or it may be right, it may be incorrect, but it automatically uh, transcribes it for me. So, if you're looking for ways to transcribe audio or audio notes, this automatically does it. Um, you have to double check it to make sure it's correct, but then you have a note that has text from your voice note. You add the audio clip here, the audio recording of it, um, and then it's still as a Google Keep note. So you can go in and add hyperlinks, images, all the other stuff, do all of the other things that we've been talking about. Um, and because I haven't dealt with this yet and I sort of want to write about this, I'm going to pin this note. And what it's going to do is it's going to add it to the top of all my reminders and everything else. To make sure that I deal with it um, soon because I did want to write about that. So once again this is Google Keep. I use this primarily as a multimodal form of a post-it note. The main way that I use it is based upon my system. My system is based on and I'll cover this in other videos and other blog posts. I want to have an inbox where everything comes into and then I want to be able to archive things and I archive things after I deal with it and process it and my version of archiving is basically akin to throwing it, throwing it out but not really throwing it out so I can see it later and use it later. So I use Google Keep as a post-it note in that system. It's free. It's a Google product so you have access to it. And this video is basically giving the overview of Google Keep and what it looks like in your browser so that we can later on take a look at how it works in my system, how it works in mobile and tablets and stuff like that. Um, so hopefully that helps you out. Um, and this is just a way to take a look at Google Keep as a way to keep yourself sane and remember things later on.